Hi, I'm Martin. I'm a senior software engineer at Kiwi.com. In my presentation, I will talk about uh, why we decided to rewrite one of our core services from Python to Go, about uh, how uh, our database topology uh, affects how we write uh, our service, and uh, about optimizations uh, that we did in our service. And uh, I'll share a project that will help uh, you to gain uh, such optimizations as well. So uh, I joined uh, Kiwi.com about a year ago. Uh, that was uh, about the week before the last year's Scylla Summit, where guys installed uh, the last batch of servers for our Scylla cluster. Uh, so let's take a look at what happened at Kiwi.com during the last year. At that time, uh, we were in the middle of migration from uh, Cassandra to Scylla. And uh, before the migration, we stored all our bus, uh, flight, and train connections uh, in a Cassandra cluster. This Cassandra cluster was accessed by multiple services written in Python. But we also required a separate layer for caching data uh, because Cassandra couldn't keep up. Uh, so uh, we decided to move from Cassandra to Scylla. And if you are interested in the details of those early phases of the migration, you can uh, watch uh, videos of uh, talks from last year. After uh, the migration, we got rid of uh, the caching layer in Redis as uh, Scylla uh, is able to cache all the data uh, itself and provide us with consistent latency. Uh, so we saved uh, uh, operation uh, as, as, as we don't uh, need to manage those uh, Redis uh, instances. And we also uh, saved on cost as we don't need to pay for those servers. What we also did was uh, we have rewritten one of our services from Python to Go. We chose a service that is uh, in the uh, user-facing side of our service. It, it, uh, the service is called when you search, when you book. So it's called uh, a lot of times. And uh, we wanted to optimize that. Go allows us to uh, take advantage of, of uh, the compiled code so that uh, so, uh, you know, we gain some performance uh, improvements from that. We also uh, get uh, static type checking which uh, uh, is not in Python, uh, but you can use uh, static analyzer. Uh, we also uh, can uh, reduce the amount of data that uh, is cached in memory, as with Python, we had a lot of uh, workers, and uh, we, we cache some data from other microservices that, uh, that we call from this service. Having uh, Go uh, means that we have just a single or, or a few instances of our service uh, per machine. So on the Go side, our setup is pretty standard. We use uh, Go SQL to access uh, the cluster. Uh, we started with uh, the uh, Scylla driver. Uh, later, we uh, forked it because we needed to, to make some changes, you know, bug, bug fixes, uh, some small features here and there. But we contribute our ch changes back to upstream. So uh, I recommend uh, uh, you use uh, the Scylla driver. And I hope uh, that uh, in the future, uh, the Scylla driver and the original GoSQL match so that, uh, uh, you know, contributing becomes easier. We also use uh, the GoSQL X library, which is nice. We built uh, queries with it, uh, map uh, structures to uh, database rows and query parameters and stuff like that. Uh, we also had to uh, tune our garbage collector uh, so that it runs uh, less frequently. Uh, this helps us uh, with the CPU usage. Uh, our cluster runs in three data centers, three different locations in Europe. Uh, those locations uh, were chosen so that 
they are far enough apart from themselves that a disaster in one location doesn't affect the other locations. But on the other hand, they are close uh, enough so that the latency is not that bad. This means that we can use just a single replica per data center uh, that saves us cost. And, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, what does this mean uh, when uh, writing applications? Well, we can't use uh, the local consistency levels as those restrict uh, the query to only the local data center. This means that any retries uh, won't work fast as we have just a single re replica in a data center. Also, the nice feature of Scylla uh, called uh, heat-based load balancing would be affected as the load balancer couldn't choose any other node, just the local one in the data center. Uh, also, this means that all retries that we have will go to remote data center. So, yeah, there will be some uh, latency penalty, but uh, as I said, the latency is uh, not that big compared to the uh, uh, local latency, so we, we are okay with it. Uh, also, this means that we need to make sure that developers are aware of uh, uh, these uh, limitations, that uh, they can't use uh, those uh, consistency levels, because when you search for uh, which consistency levels should I use, then most probably you will find on the internet that use local one or local quorum, because a lot of people run uh, the cluster with multiple replicas, and yes, it makes sense to use those if you have multiple replicas in the data center. But we just have one, so uh, it has happened uh, actually that uh, uh, a new developer tried to use this, but you know we have to make sure that everyone knows how, how our cluster topology is set up. So not just people like assume that you have multiple replicas per data center, but software does as well. For example, uh, the database driver that you use, when you use multiple data centers, you probably use a host policy uh, that is a combination of token ever host policy and a DC ever round robin policy. This means that uh, when uh, the driver selects a host to query, it selects uh, one from the local data center that has a copy of the partition you are interested in. If that node is not available, it will try to choose another one from the local data center. But when no nodes uh, that have the uh, copy of the data uh, in the local data center are available, then the driver, by default, will try another node in the local data center. As we have just a single node in uh, the data center, this means that any retries will actually go to a node that uh, doesn't have a copy of the data. So, we changed the uh, host policy and introduced a new option that changes the behavior. It first uh, tries to go to the hosts that are in local data center and have a copy of the data, and then tries uh, other data centers. This is a little different from, from just the, the simple uh, token ever uh, policy, as this uh, actually prefers the, the local data center instead of selecting random nodes with the token. Uh, we completed uh, the migration uh, from uh, Cassandra to Scylla in uh, summer. And, uh, sorry, uh, in spring. Uh, and uh, we had some other improvements uh, after that. 
So uh, one of the uh, improvements that we did was uh, we actually upgraded from the uh, older version of Scylla that we were using at the time. Uh, we were using uh, uh, Scylla version 2018 and something. And we upgraded to Scylla 2019.1. Uh, uh, we, uh, before, uh, before uh, we upgraded, uh, we, we have seen uh, some uh, issues with the cache. It was because uh, we do a lot of uh, full table scans as our uh, search uh, system needs to pre-compute a lot of data. So we quite frequently run uh, full table scans on, on our data set. This means that uh, we actually uh, got some, some rows from, from uh, uh, those full table scans into cache, and over time it accumulated. We needed to drop caches every few weeks to get rid of this. After we upgraded to uh, the newer version, uh, we were able to use bypass cache and uh, this uh, completely uh, solved uh, the issue for us as uh, the full table scan does not affect uh, the cache anymore. We also got some uh, performance improvements from that. Uh, another thing uh, what helped was switch to MCSS table format that saved us uh, around 35% of disk space. We also did uh, some uh, improvements in our Go service. Uh, over time, we optimized things. And uh, as we optimized uh, uh, other things like uh, JSON marshalling and uh, our business logic, we ended up with a uh, GoSQL driver actually taking about 40% of our CPU time that the service was using. So uh, we said, oh, well, we should look at that. Uh, and uh, we found out that uh, we are using uh, some quite large uh, user-defined types. Uh, by large, I mean about uh, two dozen uh, fields in a user-defined type. Uh, so uh, we also use named types. Uh, this is uh, uh, important because uh, GoSQL uses uh, reflection and type uh, switches to determine uh, what is the Go type that you, uh, that you want to, uh, to unmarshal data into. And uh, then it checks also uh, the SQL type the, that uh, it needs to unmarshal. Uh, and uh, if it can't uh, uh, find a type that is uh, uh, in uh, like it has uh, some predefined uh, goal types that it checks, like integers and such and on. And uh, when you have a named type, it uh, falls back to, to reflection uh, to get, get uh, the kind of uh, field that it's using. So uh, GoSQL actually provides uh, methods uh, you can implement uh, to bypass uh, the reflection that it is using. You can uh, implement either unmarshal UDT or custom unmarshal SQL methods. So uh, that's what we did. We implemented a simple unmarshal UDT uh, method that looks like this. Uh, we found uh, such a, a simple example, uh, and uh, it actually uh, works quite well. Uh, after adding a method like this uh, to our uh, structures that we map user defined types to, in about, uh, like, it took us maybe 30 minutes or so uh, to write the change, uh, we deployed it. And actually, it was, uh, the unmarshalling was uh, about four times faster than, than before. So we saved like 30% uh, CPU time because uh, the Go SQL was uh, about 40% uh, uh, of the to total before. Uh, we were quite ha happy with this uh, improvement, but over time uh, we found out that uh, we don't want to write uh, even simple uh, unmarshallers like this. 
because uh, yeah, it's boring. We want to focus on the business logic. And uh, also, uh, the performance could be improved as uh, still uh, that uh, simple code that you saw calls uh, the generic uh, unmarshal method that needs to check the, those uh, types at runtime. And uh, we need, uh, we know uh, even before, like uh, what are the types that we are using, uh, both in uh, the Go uh, program and uh, in the database. So we could write uh, manually uh, some uh, more code to uh, unmarshal this, but more complex code would mean, mean uh, the unmarshaler could introduce more errors, or you could make a mistake when, when updating uh, the unmarshaler, and so on. So uh, we decided that we want to generate the code uh, for us. We are already, already using uh, a nice uh, library and a code generator for JSON marshalling, uh, which is called uh, EasyJSON. And we wanted something like that for GoSQL. So uh, we took uh, the code generation uh, code from EasyJSON and uh, uh, unmarshalling uh, code from GoSQL and combined it into a new project called EasySQL. This will generate uh, unmarshal uh, and marshal SQL implementations for your types. And uh, uh, it has two modes. Uh, it has a conservative mode that will generate a code similar to what you have seen. Uh, it's actually not uh, unmarshal UDT, but uh, will generate unmarshal SQL, uh, but functionally it's equivalent and uh, has uh, the same performance. Uh, we also have uh, a more optimized mode that can take advantage of uh, uh, the fact that it knows what types are in the Go program, what types are in the database, uh, and uh, uh, skip some checks uh, in, in that generated code. Uh, this uh, optimized mode uh, is uh, alpha state, so use uh, at your own risk. Uh, if you want to use uh, the project, it's available on GitHub right now. So uh, there is uh, a lot of things to improve in, in this. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, at this time, uh, we don't support all combinations of uh, Go type and uh, SQL type. Uh, for those combinations that are not supported, we fall back to the generic uh, implementation in uh, Go SQL. Uh, there are some other optimizations that could be made. For example, uh, if we uh, would know uh, the order of fields in the database, then uh, uh, we can actually uh, check just uh, uh, the fields uh, in, in the specific order. Currently, it, it checks uh, uh, all the fields as it, as, as, as it uh, reads it from the database. Also, uh, uh, as we implement support for uh, things like uh, uh, collection types, uh, sets, maps, uh, and lists, uh, there are some possible optimizations there, uh, uh, like uh, uh, checking some types uh, outside of, of the loop that processes elements. And uh, also, uh, we focused on uh, uh, the uh, unmarshalling uh, part because our service mostly uh, reads data. Uh, we'll be uh, rewriting some other uh, Python services to go, so we uh, will want to use uh, optimized mode also for uh, marshalling. Currently, uh, the optimized, uh, if you select optimized mode, uh, it will generate the same code for, uh, like the conservative mode.